This video brought to you by Morphin Network is sponsored by Ranger Stock Convention, which is November 13th to the 15th, 2020 in Orlando, Florida. Go to rangerstoporlando.com for more info. So, Glenn, let me ask you this. How's quarantine like? <laughs> Quarantine's actually been awesome for me. We had a, a our first baby like, right at the start of the quarantine. Um, so I was actually planning to just stay home a bit and chill with him anyway, and then we were kind of forced to do it. And it's kind of been ideal. I mean, waking up at... 11 p.m., 1 p.m., 3, uh, 1 a.m., 3 a.m., 5 a.m. isn't ideal, but um, but apart from that, it's actually been pretty nice to be with the little guy. He's asleep in the other room, by the way. I told him to stay. He's in his cage, soundproof cage, so he's all good. Hey man, I know, I feel you, because I used to babysit my nephew, and I literally would wake up like 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning just to feed him. So I feel beauty. I feel you. Yeah, it's um, it's full on, but um, no, but quarantine's it's actually not been that bad. How about for you guys? Uh, so far it's been okay. I mean, it's also been tough because um, again, I've been unemployed ever since the quarantine quarantine happened, but I'm just pushing through. So just keeping myself sane and you know being positive as always. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You got. I think it's just affected heaps of people, but you know, great that we can do this sort of thing and still connect with uh, everyone everywhere it's kind of cool right yes awesome especially oh quarantine life it is quiet <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it's you want a uh, baby at 3 a.m that'll make it a little uh noisy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh also um i already well it's been great and also i re i reached to my weight uh weight loss goal and nice it, it is good and i'm still going it i'm still going at it and i just treated myself with a with a thai uh fried rice as a reward for reaching to that weight loss goal and it took me two weeks to do it nice <laughs> nice get this in australia because I, I love thai food as well thai fried oh. rice is probably like one of my top three top three dishes to to eat oh. uh, in australia they eat more Thai food than any other type of food, like more than Italian food, more than Japanese, more than Chinese, it's Thai food in Australia. Hmm. Nice. Maybe the spices and the sweetness are the good combination for a dish. Yeah, you might, you, you'll like it down here. You should uh, oh, plan nice. a trip. Definitely. Oh, After yeah. It's over. When, when we can fly, right? Yeah, definitely. Oh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special live stream interview of Morphin Network. We have, for the first time, offer an online interview, the yellow Ninja Storm Ranger himself, Glenn McMillan. What's up, man? What's up, guys? How you have, doing? You good? You're doing good out All there? All good. Yeah, we're, uh, we're doing well. I'm here in Sydney, Australia. Um, quarantined at home. Actually, we're not really that quarantined anymore. We can kind of go out and do what we want now, but I'm still at the home because it's Saturday morning and... Uh, just chilling, which is nice. Awesome. So, Glenn, tell us about yourself. Uh, well, I'm Glenn McMillan. You may remember me from such TV shows as Power Rangers Ninja Storm. Um, I guess I was, uh, where do I start? Well, I'm, I'm kind of half Brazilian, half Australian. I was born in Brazil, grew up in Brazil. Well, I, my family moved to Australia when I was like four years old. So, uh, um, both... Aussie, Brazilian, a bit of a mix, probably more Aussie these days. But um, yeah, look, I got into acting when I was pretty young, when I was like uh, 11 years old. My mom threw me and my two sisters into like acting classes after school on Fridays, which I loved doing and it was it was fun. And, um, and then I remember one day there was a, my, my mom threw me into to an audition for, um, for a play at the, state theater company for south australia and the audition was to go and dr mind drinking a glass of water right it was just <laughs> drink a glass of water and i remember there was like me and 10 other kids that all kind of looked like me and uh, everyone was kind of doing the same thing like they were just going like and i thought well i've got to elaborate a bit more right so i i remember in my came around to my turn I'm like cool go glenn 
And so I mind getting the, the cup from the cupboard, turning on the tap, turning off the tap and drinking the water. And then I think they were like, oh yeah, cool. Like he's given us at least something a bit more. The, then the player didn't have to say anything anyway. So it was like, mine was fine. Um, but yeah, that's where I got into acting. And then from there, kind of just got roles after roles and, and you know, and, and ended up on Power Rangers when I was uh, 17, like a week before my 18th birthday. Ooh, so you're 18 in Power Rangers when you started Power Rangers? Well, I was 17. So the first, the first app um, that we shot over in New Zealand was like, I think it was like a week before my 18th birthday. Hmm. Wow. Wow. So you are technically the youngest Yellow Ranger male <laughs> ever casted. See, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, like it was Sally and me. We were both, I think, 17. And then there was a bit of a gap because then, like, Pua, I think at the time was 23 or 24. Adam, I think, was, um, yeah, the same kind of age. Jason Chan was a little bit older. Like Jason had already gone through med school and then through NIDA, which is the you know big prestigious uh, drama school here in Sydney, which is where Adam went as well. And he was 31. Man, and at the time I was like, he's old, 31. <laughs> and now I'm 35, so there you go. Well, <laughs> no worries. How did you get started with acting? Like, can you elaborate more on like, the part to acting part? Yeah, so like, so I was living in Adelaide. I grew up in a town, or a city called Adelaide, which is um, like two hours here from Sydney flying. Mm -hmm. And so like I said, yeah, I, I, I got, my mum had thrown us into these, uh, into these acting classes and, and I, yeah, I don't know how she heard about it actually, but she, I guess it must've been through the little acting agency that she'd registered us with about that play. And I went and did that play. Uh, and it was actually full on that play, like it was, heavy and dark and like not for kids at all um at all like it was really really bad it was full on and and so i was doing this play for like four months and uh surprisingly i don't I can't believe i didn't quit acting after that um but i kept going with it because it was heavy that play and then and then i registered with like an acting agency another acting agency in adelaide and i got uh, film, a part in a, in a Aussie film, and then I, uh, then I got a part in a, in a TV show, which ran for a couple of years here in Australia, and just sort of kept auditioning for stuff. And then, um, yeah, when I was like 17, Power Rangers, but I was kind of like at school. I was at school part time, and then I was, you know, off doing some, some shows and, and films through. Uh, through all of it. Um, there is one sh movie that I actually wanted. Um, you, ever, you remember you were in Xenon, Xenon 3? Yeah. So yeah. That, was that was shot between, uh, right after we did Ninja Storm in New Zealand, um, I went off to to South Africa to do Xenon, Z3. Okay. And so that so Xenon was between shooting um, Ninja Storm and our cameo on Dino Thunder. Nice. Actually, what's funny is like, so some of the fans ask you, let's be show this though. You remember to yourself in this part? <laughs> Look at that hair. Yeah. Man, I wish I had that much hair still. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I remember you, I remember watching the movie. I was like, hey, it looks familiar. Like, oh my God, it's the yellow version of Ninja Storm. I was like, came on, I was like eight years old at the time. So <laughs> I was actually recently down at my, I was back at my parents' house in Adelaide um, when the baby was born. And I was like going through the cupboards of like all my parents' stuff and all the junk that I leave behind there. And, um, and I found this roll and I was like, what is this thing? This big roll, I think. And it was that poster, it was a Xenon Z3 poster. Oh and it's, man, it's giant. It's like the size of the wall, it's huge. Um, I don't know what to do with it. It's just stashed there. Hey, that's a real, like, it's hard to find those posters now, honestly, it's hard to find those. So what was the audition process like for Power Rangers? The audition process? Yes. Uh, yeah, so it was it was a pretty amazing story actually for me. I um, so I was down in Adelaide, and they were cut. They were so Doug Sloan. Well, hang on. Before that, so there was the audition process. Usually with the audition process, it's like the first call we usually call like a cattle call. Like they just call thousands of 
paddle, like thousands of kids to come and audition for it. So I auditioned in Adelaide, I put down a tape with a casting director who had actually already cast me in the first film that I did when I was 13. So she called me along for the audition and I did the audition uh, just with her. And then like a few weeks went by or yeah, like a month went by or something and she gave me a call and she said, um, hey Glenn, the producers who turned out to be Doug Sloan, um, uh, are coming to Adelaide to do like the second round callbacks and, and interview the, the short list of actors, but you didn't get a callback. Um, they're seeing like five, five actors here and, and you didn't get a callback. But I thought, she said, I thought your audition was really good. I think you deserve another shot at it. So what she, she kind of hooked me up. She said, what I'm going to do is get you in to work as the reader. So like the reader, when people are auditioning in front of the camera, there's like the reader who reads the other lines off camera. Like you don't even see the reader in the audition. So you come in and work as the reader and then I'll at least get you into the room and you can try to make an impression. So went in there, worked as the reader and then Doug, said to me like uh, at the end of the day um he goes glenn how come you didn't audition for this i said oh, i did audition but i didn't get a call back and they said we never saw your tape um so the tape must have got lost somewhere in the mix uh he said i tell you what you hear why don't you just go and do a test now on camera and uh and then we've got one uh, with you so i put down my test and then uh, what was it, like a couple of weeks later, they called me back for third round audition, which was awesome. So I was back in the, in play. Uh, third round audition was here in Sydney. And I think by that stage, they were actually already like, I, I, I felt like I had already been given one of the roles. Like I thought I was pretty much in. It was just a matter of which Carlo they were going to mix it up. Like who was going to be red, who was going to be yellow, um, etc. So. Uh, and then it was like, yeah, a couple of days, it was pretty quick after that, a couple of days after that, my agent called and said, like, you've got the role, which is sweet. So, I do have a, I do have a question, like, how did this feel like being the first male yellow, actually no, the first, technically second, like, actual canon male yellow ranger? Second? Yeah, because basically the first Metal Yellow Ranger I found out was from the original season, the third season of My Morphin, when there were aliens, alien rangers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's funny. Like, for my whole life, like, after Power Rangers, people people are always like, man, are you really, are you really a Power Ranger? Like, there's always the three questions. Are you really a Power Ranger? Yes. Uh, which color were you? Yellow. Wasn't that a girl? <laughs> like... Yes, it was a girl. It was a girl originally. Um, but hey, I don't know. I guess like, it's good. It's good. It's like the Brazilian guy, yellow. It's like kind of makes sense. And, and Dustin was a pretty kind of fun kind of character. So yeah, it was good. It was cool. And we love, plus we loved your character too, especially back then, like how you were portrayed, like doing motorbikes. Cause I loved motorbikes back then. So like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, nice. and also that lion hammer and uh, your character used is like a it's like a dirt bike like star. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, so interesting about Dustin, the, like the character as it was written, Doug Sloan. Um, you know, he said to me sort of at the start when we were getting all uh, prepared, we hadn't even shot anything. He said, um, Dustin. Like I said, I wrote Dustin to kind of be like me when I was a kid. Dustin's like a young, young me. Um, Cause Doug's all into his motocross. He's a really good motocross rider. He's like a pretty, you know, happy go lucky kind of guy. Um, so yeah, uh, I thought that was, might, might be an interesting one for the, for the fans to know as well. Like what Dustin was theoretically based on was a young Doug. Yeah. Do people know, yeah, so people know who Doug, Doug is? Doug Sloan, isn't he the one of the producers of the show? Yeah, so he was producing for for years. So he was producer and writer. Um, I think he left the show at some stage, but um, yeah, but he was he was really responsible. Like for when it went over to Disney, like Doug was the driving force uh, behind the whole create creative process behind Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. 
definitely. What was the experience like filming Power Rangers? Your like your experience? Yeah, so like so like I said, I was 17 years old. Like I was finishing high school. I was about three months off finishing my uh, what we call here year 12, like a final final year of, of school. Um, and I guess like you know I'd done an, a few shows and, and films before that, but. This is the first thing that was actually going to take me overseas, um, and I remember some someone saying to me once, like I was about to head off to New Zealand, and someone said to me, like, "Oh, that's really brave of you." And I was like, "Brave? Like it was such a weird thing to say." I was like, "Why brave? Like it's exciting. It was fun." Um, so yeah, like it really was just heaps of fun for me to go over when I was seventeen and. Um, I, on my first day, I remember I arrived there at the airport. Sally was already in the in the car. They picked Sally up from from the airport, and then came and picked me up. And then I think we went and picked up um, Jorge. But it was cool. Like I think we were all just super excited to to be on that journey. It was kind of like it was kind of big for us all. We were kind of you know we were all kids, um, except for Jason Chan. He was old. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, look, it was heaps of fun. We all got along super well. We were all heaps of friends. Um, we spent all our time together. Um, I loved it. I just like I had a I had a blast. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Like like especially like I could tell your like chemistry between you guys was excellent, and you guys did like did a great introduction to the Disney era because back then I'll admit like when we were kids. We're like, okay, how is this transition to Disney? Because remember, it was all Saban. Yeah. And you guys were the perfect transition to the Disney era. So thank you for that. So I'm always interested, like, when people say that, like, so in what way was it uh, was it a good tr Disney transition? Because, like, I, there are other shows, like, you know, by other companies, like, they would, like, there's, like, they would buy it and do transitioning. And we were kind of scared, like, oh, shoot, it's, like, what are you going to do with Power Rangers? Because, you know, Disney bought it. But when. Yeah. But when your first episode aired, like, oh shoot, it's actually really cool because it actually shows like now a new setting, like actual like a teenagers acting like real, real life people, like like yeah. in, the, in the scenario like we would do it instead of the back then, and I like you know like color coded and like like happy happy go lucky. So I yeah. like there's basically the realism, the sense of realism in your season. Yeah, nice, cool. Yeah, I think like that first there's that there's oh, the first scene that Dustin appears in is like where I jump in the back of the van, Sally's like blue combi van and like roll over the seat and into the into the front with um Sally and Poor. And um yeah, like I remember I remember watching that scene and I was like, man, that that scene just feels fun and it, and we were we were just having fun. And that was one of the things like Doug was like just have fun, have fun with it. Um so yeah, it was, it was cool. If any fun behind scene moments while on set, so like any like pranks, like nice stories you want to tell us? Yeah, I think all of the like silly prank stories always involve poor, because uh, he was just having fun all the time. So I remember one of the one of the worst ones was so Grant McFarlane, who like uh, played Lothor and then Sensei, like in New Zealand, he was a really um, highly respected theater actor, like traditional, super professional. Um, and, and there was this one day in set where in the, in our ninja headquarters, when the, there's the Zord Bay, like it opens up uh, and there's this neon sign that says Zord Bay. And poor, um, would make fun of that, like talking like, the Samoans and say, because they say like bro, they say like bro, but they say B. Um, and so he's like, oh, it's a sword B, it's a sword B. And it just cracked, um, it cracked Grant McFarlane up. Like he got a serious case of the giggles. And when you get the giggles and these, it's so hard to, to break. And, um, and it, like, it wasn't even that funny. It was just poor doing his normal, like joking around stuff. And Grant McFarlane cracked. We were trying to do take after take. I reckon we got to like take 14, 15. In the middle of the um, scenes, Grant would just start laughing and just couldn't stop it. And everyone was laughing. Um, and the the first assistant director, he was pretty angry. Uh, he was really pissed off. He was an angry guy. Um, <laughs> and he goes, and he knew it was poor. And he's like, poor, 
what are you doing? Shut up. And Paul was like, man, I, like, I'm not doing anything. And for the first time in ages, like Paul wasn't doing anything. And it was Grant has just lost it. And, <laughs> um, and uh, Grant just had to like time out. Guys, sorry, I need half an hour. I need to get out of here and get some air. Um, but yeah, it was usually Pua involved in, uh, in the pranks. Oh. And again, to Pua, to Pua rest in peace. Yes. Um, so did you ever see this, this Power Ranger franchise to grow this big? Well, I already knew it was big. Like when I was a kid, when I was 10 years old, I, I would watch Mighty Morphin TV. Um, hmm. And yeah, like I remember when my, at the end of the audition process, when they were offering me the role and my agent called and said, look, they are offering you the role. She said to me at the time, you know, Glenn, like if you take this role, this will be with you forever. Like this will mark your career forever. And um, I guess I didn't really give it that much thought. And it's only like, uh, literally, it was last night. And I was like, oh, cool. We're going to do this thing tomorrow. That I was thinking, wow, like those words really rang true. What she said, I, I, I really wouldn't have imagined at the time that 17 years later, um, Power Rangers would still be kind of this relevant to, to so many people. But that's what's awesome about it. Like, you know, I've, I've done tons of other projects, but Power Rangers is the one thing that just keeps coming back and people engage with and they love it. And I think it took me, you know, some years to kind of process that and go, wow, like it's cool to, to have been part of something that really um, m impacted so many people's lives. And, and like when I was back in Brazil as well, like in Brazil, um, Power Rangers was huge over there. And so many people got into Power Rangers and then they found out, like, oh, I've got a Brazilian guy who's a Power Ranger. And I've just had that many people come and say to me like, man, I just have to tell you this, like your show um, was so important to my childhood and and um, so that's awesome. Like I'm super proud of it. I, I, I love it and I think it's it's great. Yeah, that's and thank you to the fans, obviously, like because it's because of the fans and because of people like you guys, you know, to keep keep into it and keep um, producing content like this to, to keep the franchise alive and keep people into it. Definitely. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I would, after school, I would be ready to go on to that channel to watch Ninja Storm. And I, to be quite honest, like your character, the nin the yellow Ninja Ranger, Ninja Storm Ranger was my favorite of the, the starting three of Ninja Storm series. And I just couldn't get enough of that, of your character and you. So I just, and I just love the lion Ninja Storm Ranger. It's awesome. I bet you say that to all the yellow Ninja Storm Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, it was cool. No, it was, uh, that's great. Thank you. Other than Power Rangers, what is the most memorable film or television show you ever did? Um, I did a, I was doing a show here in Sydney um, called Wonderland a few years back. And, and that was, uh, that was, I don't know, man. Like, I was gonna, yeah, like, that was a really good, cool show just because it was really kind of real and raw. And it was like what I live day to day here. It was um, about like, it was about uh, four couples who live in an apartment block and you know, their life kind of like, I don't know, friends or something. Uh, so that was cool. But I guess they're all memorable in their own way. Like, when you, when you do acting projects, they're all usually pretty different from one another. And, they're all really memorable in their in their own way. Like with Xenon, it was memorable because like we're in South Africa, and the clothes are crazy. And um, but even like theatre productions, they're all really memorable in their own ways. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, I guess they're all pretty pretty unique. That's not a really great answer to your question, but like, <laughs> yeah, that's even like school uh -huh. plays. When I was at like school and doing plays. They're all super memorable because I, I like I think yeah with some of the school plays when they're really um, amateur like amateur theater at school that there's no like fancy business about it you're all really there to, to just get into your characters and put on a play and 
to me, they've also been some of the most like memorable and enjoyable things that I've done. Um, uh, Cause you kind of just having fun with it. Yeah, I know. I guess they're all a bit different. But yeah, man, like, hey, but still, I mean, you made it in acting world and neck the hell. Like you made it and <laughs> you persevered, man. You told people your dream. So that's a good <laughs> sign. Yeah, yeah. Like I, yeah, when I was a young kid, I was just kind of sort of falling into it. Um, yeah, I thought I'd just be doing acting because the, the, the role sort of just kept kept coming, which was cool. Yeah. You guys getting this in the background too? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> the book. On the shelf there. Uh, I see the helmet. So, guy, hey guys, you can look in his right, like Glenn's like left, well, his left, stage left. Ah, yeah, stage left, left. Stage left. It's pretty far in the background, but yeah. Not <laughs> what's um, there, so. <laughs> what do you see your character Dustin doing right now in the current Power Rangers canon? Yeah, I reckon, um, I think Dustin would still be working at the motorbike shop, mm. um, riding motocross. Probably carrying a few injuries and a few broken bones from uh, half a career in motocross, Ooh. and um, yeah, maybe married Kelly. I don't know. She was a few years older than him, but <laughs> maybe married Kelly, and uh, and training the, the the new generation of ninjas on the download, which was yeah, like it was cool. I liked how they got us back for the the last episode that we were then training the the new the new generation of the ninjas um yeah i think it'd still just be riding his motorbikes kind of like doug nice nice um so glenn um my next question is what is your advice to an aspiring actor or an actress look i think acting you gotta keep it fun you gotta um i, I got some really good advice once from a from an acting coach um larry moss who um, who trains, I, I did a, one of his master classes here in Sydney, but Larry Moss preps Leonardo DiCaprio for every role he does. Um, he's trained uh, big, big top actors. Um, he's, a, he's a boss. And Larry said to all of us, and I was like, yeah, that, that really makes sense. He said, you gotta love acting, not just when like your career is going up and things are going well, you gotta love it as well when things are going down or when they're kind of just plateauing you just got to love it um because otherwise you let the trajectory of your career dictate whether or not you're having a good time or whether you like what you do so yeah look, you just got to enjoy it as a thing um and and then you know from a practical sense there's just there's the reality of the fact that you got to go out and like find an agent uh you got to get them uh, to put you up for roles and you just got to go and audition and audition. Um, be prepared to get like, I was trying to work out my strike rate once because I do, you know, you audition for so much stuff and you miss most of them, right? Like you, I reckon my strike rate was probably as low as one in, one in 30 or 40. Like you go into 30 or 40 auditions to get, one gig and that's a lot right like that can really grind on you and you miss stuff and you miss stuff and you miss stuff but um yeah if you, if you do actually just enjoy going in and doing auditioning because you you know you get a shot to uh, act then um yeah you just got to chip away at it. and i think be prepared for that kind of strike rate okay cool everyone that i miss i know i'm a step closer to the one that i'll actually get um because i think yeah i think a lot of people just go cool i'll go into it and it'll be easy and it'll be sweet um so i think you've got to be ready for that kind of um the, the fails like the fails will bring you a step closer to the success um and uh yeah keep at it that's right right see you guys we're going to world with all the advice definitely any upcoming projects you want to tell your fans to uh, the morphin network well, see, for a while now, I actually haven't really even been doing any acting. And so I've kind of, with the baby and, you know, I'm here in Sydney, um, I haven't really been pushing the acting at all. Um, so, like, I guess no real exciting projects on the acting front, um, which is a bit of a weird thing. Like, 
it's a bit of a weird thing. Maybe I'll go back to it, but uh, I guess, um, yeah, I guess after I got married and stuff, I kind of thought maybe I won't keep acting. Because one of the things actually also with acting, you got to, it, it makes you travel a lot. You're always traveling, you're on the road, you're living here, there and everywhere. And I was literally living out of a suitcase for like six years. And I kind of, I didn't have a, I didn't have a home. Like I didn't live anywhere. I'd always just be traveling. So I kind of wanted some time like to have a home, have my family. And um, for the moment, I'm loving doing that. <laughs> Except when it's three in the morning and the baby's home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, like I feel your pain. <laughs> but hey, respect, that's high respect, respect, man. I guess. Um, so before we go to question and comments, so Glenn, there's actually a, I don't know if you heard that, um, you actually did inspire your season. Technically, your character inspired many fan films, but there's one technically one fan film that I like to share to you. It's called First Ninja. It's actually based on your character. Well, the father of your character. And actually, the creator right here, right now, I want to say hi to you. Oh, so, you ready for nice. him? So, he's over here. His name is Colin K. Bass. So, Colin, what's up, man? Hey, everyone. I have enjoyed hey. this interview so much. Hi, Glenn. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me, man. This is so cool. No worries. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming on and thanks for your work. It's awesome. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. So uh, just a little bit about it. It's a prequel to Ninja Storm. It's how like the Wind Ninja Academy even got started. And I'm sure you hear it a lot, but you're my favorite character of the season. But I kind of wanted to twist it up. So I made the Red Ranger the father of future Dustin Brooks. So I I'm play Jackson Brooks. And it all leads up to Ninja Storm. So I just wanted to thank you for inspiring me to make this uh, series and it really changed my life. And you're the best, dude. Yeah. Awesome. That's great, man. Um, um, so here's the, so oh. how do you go shooting this? Like you do you do this all yourself and you got a couple of friends? Helping? Yeah, so uh, I was actually at Morphicon and we went to a fan film panel and I got super inspired. And I was like, what season would be awesome? What, what season would be something that no one really knows about? And then I thought, you know, Ninja Storm had elements, ninjas, the school. We could like, you know, focus more on what happened that led us up to the Power Rangers. And granted, we all become Power Rangers in the first episode, but we were super inspired by the fans at Morphicon. And uh, we have a little a crew. I mean, I act in right over in California. That's where I am right now. So we go up yeah. to Big Bear and we film. We have two episodes now and a few shorts. And it's just been amazing. And I, it's all because I wanted to have a be a part of like the Power Rangers universe and especially Ninja Storm. Nice. And it's so cool, like so many stories pick up on the prequel thing. Like we had Joker recently and um, like Star Wars obviously did it, but it's a cool, I think a lot of people are fascinated with like, you know, the question of what came before and obviously what comes after, but the before thing's really been picking up as a as a cool thing. Yeah, um, definitely. And are we, uh, we're like hinting at everything, but basically your, your mom is gonna be a, a water elemental. So she becomes like the blue ranger and then I'm wind, and then that creates you. So uh, again, thank you so much. I know it's a little weird, but you're a wonderful son. I'm so happy you're playing your <laughs> well, I do you, have, well, I do have a picture, well, right? I actually remember seeing some of it, like I saw some of it bouncing around on, on, uh, on YouTube. It was a couple, I think it's a little while ago, first time I saw it, I was like, man, that's a good looking dude. I'd be proud to be uh, that guy's son. Hey, right back at you, son. There's no the family. <laughs> you have them. So here you go. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, so yeah, so like, so yeah. <laughs> um, also, That's awesome. So also, yeah, so here's another set here, Colin. So yeah, this is that one set. So that's cool. Really cool. <laughs> but yeah, guys, if you guys want to follow Colin's uh, fan film, The First Ninja, be sure to go to YouTube and Crimson Vision Studios. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Glenn, it was so nice meeting you, and I hope I see you at a convention when the world gets back to normal. Yeah, for sure. It was a shame uh, that uh, Palmorphicon got pushed, but I'll be there next year. Ooh. Awesome. Oh. Great. And I, can't, I don't know if like, I'm supposed to say that, but anyway, that's the plan. We got confirmation. Can I come up and be like, son, <laughs> daddy's home. Can I say that? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. You guys have a great day. You too, cheers. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, so Glenn, we have, yes, yeah, so yeah, I mean, like I see, you inspire a lot of like filmmakers to make a seat, like do fan films, so you're one of them. <laughs> um, So guys, this ends the 10 question every part of our uh, live stream. We have no comments and questions. So Glenn, are you ready to say hi to your fans? Well, comments wise. Go for it. 
So Anti Marsh Jr. says, "What's up, Bronze God?" Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so everyone gets that, right? Like it's a reference to the um, yeah, the Bronze God episode. Bo Bokakado, yes, I found. <laughs> <laughs> you found him. <laughs> Here he is. Uh, the Ortega says, "Hey, Glenn, regards from Peru." Oh, hey, man. Oh, yeah, cool, Peru. Nice. See, this is one of the cool things. Like, it goes everywhere. So, oh, bros. I've never been one. Oh my god! Oh, it's a typhoon. Uh, <laughs> I'm a foodie too, uh, Clement. I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> uh, JD Park says, "Hey, Glenn, would you ever come back for a team up?" Oh, interesting. Oh. Uh, yeah, man, I'd love to do a team up. Sally went back for 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 something. You guys are probably telling. Me. Yeah, want overdrive, overdrive. Wants a ranger. Yeah. Um, someone even floated the idea of like doing a Brazilian power to think is then there was, uh, there were two other like Brazilian people. So yeah, the kids in Brazil were like, oh, do like a Brazilian power to team up. So yeah, man, I'll be up for it. So Hasbro, you're watching this. You want to come back. <laughs> um, Glenn, oh, Glenn. So Sebastian Sellers below says, hey Glenn, are you excited for a new season? Um, are you actually covered up the Power Rangers? He's asking, something like that. Uh, yeah, so when does it come out? Uh, I think next year. It's, it's not it's now Dino again. Dino, Dino Fury. Oh, they're doing the Dino thing. Uh, yeah, actually, that reminds me. I was recently here in Sydney and I ran into, um, I was at like the outdoor cinema and sitting behind me was, you know, Dacker Montgomery. Uh, Dacker Montgomery? Oh, shoot, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. Cool. So, sitting right behind me and i'd met him somewhere before and i turned around i was like huh man like there were hundreds of people at this outdoor cinema thing i was like fancy having two power rangers like within three square meters of each other and uh wow. yeah we we had a chat about power rangers it was kind of crazy that just for some reason came into my head um david david rimka says what was it like to film the oh good question with dino thunder oh um it was weird because <laughs> We felt like we were like the original guys there in New Zealand and they came and took our thunder. Um, no pun intended from Dino Thunder. But like, <laughs> we're like, man, this is our place. What are you guys doing here? <laughs> like, treading on our turf. This is our spot. So it was like, yeah, it was kind of weird in a way. Like, in a way it was cool because we came back and did it all again. But I, I, I remember at the time kind of feeling like, they were stepping on our turf and it was a bit like we'd been superseded. It was kind of, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of weird, but they were cool dudes. Um, but yeah, it was weird. Yeah, <laughs> you did play an evil power ranger, so you did to get to kick their <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, we could really feed into like the ugh, anger against those guys. Yeah, it says, hi, Glenn, Richard, ranger stop, Buster. Aw. Let me see if I can Richard Yeh. recognize him. Oh, I do recognize Richard, yeah. Um, so, yeah, because I did the Ranger Stop convention in Orlando last year, which was awesome. It was the first time that I had done one of the cons, and it was awesome. I'm, I'm so glad I did it. Hmm, that's Is Ranger Stop on again for next year? Um. So right now, we don't – currently, we don't know yet, but hopefully – if things go well, we will be scheduled for this year. But there is Ranger Stop this on top. Year. Yeah, this year. But if oh, cool. things go scheduled, we also have a Ranger Stop next year. What's called Ranger Stop on top? That's in Atlanta. So yeah. Um. Oh, so Ryan Henry says at the uh, Yellow Ranger, I'd like to meet him in person at Albuquerque or Santa Fe. Oh, so hey guys, if you want, ask the con promoter where those cons are. <laughs> So how many con like there's so many cons now in the US? It's cool. A lot, like hundreds. A lot. A lot. Really, hundreds. Whoa. Um, yeah, it's just a shame that Australia is so far down in this little corner of the world. It's it's uh, pretty far to get there. But hey, no worries, guys. You'll see a Morbicon next year. Hey. What's funny is, look, I, me and Clement, we literally live 12 minutes away from that convention center building <laughs> for Morbicon. Oh, nice. so we'll, we'll see you. In Anaheim? Pasadena. Pasadena. Pasadena, okay, cool. 
Um, oh, Anti Mush Jr., good question. What was your favorite episode of Ninja Storm? Who? Um, um, there were a few fun ones. I, reckon, I think, well, the mo- the one that was the most fun to shoot you, uh, was the food fight. You guys remember the food fight? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, the food. Because, like, who doesn't like a food fight, right? Everyone dreams about actually being able to have a food fight. Mm-hmm. Do you guys remember, um, in the, I don't know if this was like maybe. This was, was when I was a kid, but the film Hook with yes, um, yes, right, yes. yes, with Robin Williams and Rufy, oh, Rufy, and they have that food fight. Yeah, and I watched it as a kid, and I was like, ah, oh, imagine if one day you could just have an all-out food fight like that. And so that episode of Power Rangers where we had the food fight was just a dream come true to be able to do that. And the best thing was you didn't have to clean anything up. <laughs> all the other. <laughs> The, the crew would clean everything up and chuck and stuff everywhere. Um, that was so much fun to do. Um, and then I think like my actual favorite uh, episode, episode just like as an episode was um, the one with uh, Dustin and Mara, like with Dustin. Oh, and, oh, right? oh, yeah, I remember that. Beeble, the so, I'm with Beeble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Just, I don't know, I guess for Dustin, it was kind of a bit more, it was a bit deeper and like there was a romantic or like a, an emotional element to it. And it was like, it was, you know, it was fun. It was different. It's cool. <laughs> that, um, that Bish- Bishido says, have you, had you, have you ever had the chance to watch the nice series Secure Kid Your Own? He's asking me if you ever watch your Japanese counterpart before when you uh, yeah like i've only seen bits on youtube because i i haven't really i haven't been able to find like the full episodes but um like i've just seen little clips and i've obviously seen the picture of me as a japanese guy um mm-hmm. uh, but yeah i haven't seen full episodes but um, i've seen little bits and pieces mm. yeah <laughs> the japanese version of you is it's kind of cool they're both uh, they're both cool it's just the uh, the the Japanese Power Rangers, they have like a like a long poetry line they say before they they're prepared to battle. And they have like these umbrellas or these scarves and they throw in the air and then just do a pose like that. Well, like their morph sequence is a whole poetry thing. Well, they first morph and then they say their poetic um their their poetry from their from their natural elements and then they have like the Japanese oh, yeah. um, Raw umbrellas, and then they just toss in the air, and then ready to fight. <laughs> oh, crazy! Yeah, man, like Japanese culture is crazy. One of my, I, I'd love to go to Japan. It's like I think the number one place on my list that I have never been to that I want to go. Because my, I want to go to Japan, and one of my absolute dreams is to get onto. Um, you guys know the show Takeshi's Castle? Yes. Oh yes. 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 Love that. Show. Yes, I love I that. I would love to get onto Takeshi's Castle. Sometimes they have like Westerners who get on it. And it's just so weird and so crazy. Um, if anyone has any hookups of how I can get onto Takeshi's Castle in Japan, please let me know. So yeah, guys, please let me know. Um, Dave Plowby. Oh, heads up, Dave. Glenn says, thank you, thank you for being on hand, on hand during your memorial this past November at Ranger Stop. Seeing you and John share the memories of Google was warm to see to truly know what kind of man he was. Right on. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, I think Dave would have been there, man. It was it was full on because yeah, um, uh, John was obviously super good friends with Pua. I was super good friends with Pua, and I think oh, I don't know. Like for me, I just hadn't really had the the connection kind of with anyone here who also knew Pua as well as I did. And so I think when John and I um, just met up there, it was just it was pretty full on I, we had no we didn't have any cameras in there we, we just asked for no cameras no filming or anything so we could just be pretty like uh raw and i think for the people who were there um it was uh yeah it was like really intimate and it was it was really nice so yeah cool again so to go rest in peace mm. um Laurel Harris says, you rock as Dustin, and you know what I would so have just return for this how your fan being that you my friend and I are doing. Oh. Oh, nice. Oh. Um, Jess Thank Fon- you. Yes. Uh, Jess Fountain says, hey, what's up? What's up, Toku Kid? <laughs> what's up? What's up, Jess Fountain? Yes. So he has a YouTube page called Toku Kid, so guys, please follow him. 
and Michael Brogdon from Henshin Gate says, Hello from Henshin Gate and Storm Ranger from Ha. Hello from Henshin Gate. Where yeah. is Henshin Gate? That's a YouTube channel. Ah, cool. All right. Yo. Hey, Michael. Uh, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Do you speak Portuguese or Spanish? Portuguese. Portuguese do Brasil. Um, eu, assim, entendo mais ou menos espanhol, mas o meu, eu não falo espanhol, eu falo português. Brasil. There's any Brazilians out there? I don't understand that. Awesome. Um, okay, so Ken Brown says, Hi, Glenn, I was kind of always kind of serious as the Michael Michelangelo Power Rangers, <laughs> <laughs> not the artist. Oh my god. Yeah, nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, that's actually a cool comment. Because um, when I grew up watching Ninja Turtles as well, I love Michelangelo. Michelangelo was my favorite, and also. Yellow. Johnny Goddard says, Hi Glenn, you did, you did a great job playing Yellow Ranger from Power Rangers from your fan Johnny Goddard. Awesome. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate Aww. it. <laughs> and Kent's asking, remember having the Ninja Star contest with it? Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> it's a contest, yeah. And like you're trying not to blink and tears are coming down your eyes. Um Yeah. But I do like a stare contest. Oh, Estella Costa says, I made a helmet. Really now? Yeah, so this is Estella. She made me this helmet. She's from oh, Brazil. Cool. So shout out to Estella then. Oh, shout out. I actually, I actually want to show her something. Now, let me grab this. Um, so Estella made this for me. She's a champion. Look at this. Wow. And it opens up. Um, but she, yeah, it's, it's sick. She did an awesome job. Thanks, Estella. <laughs> Let me put it back. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no. Uh, nice, but hey, that's really so cool. That's a really great helmet. That's it's a awesome. really great helmet. It's awesome. The, the details is is very well spot on. Uh, Boken's asking, did you get to do your own work across free sauce? Oh, good question. Oh. Um, Unfortunately, I I couldn't physically do what the guy did. He was the guy that they got over to do all of those stunts. Was this a guy from the UK? He was a like motocross stunt champion. Like he can do backflips on motorbikes. Um, so I didn't because a I can't do that. And <laughs> b because obviously it was going to be too dangerous. Um, they didn't even let they didn't even let us ride those motorbikes with the with the engine running. We had one day where we like went out and, and uh, we were riding along the beach just to get some practice. But all of the filming bits um, when I'm like on the motorbike and there's a close up of my head like this, my face, I'm just literally sitting on the motorbike without the engine running. So um, and then all of the like proper stunts were done by. The awesome stunt man. Could you maybe do your Dustin voice for us? <laughs> Could you still do it? What's my Dustin voice, dude? I just remember that Dustin said "dude" all the time. <laughs> I don't know if my voice is kind of different to, to I don't know, 15, 17 years ago. But is that Dustin? I don't know. I guess so. <laughs> nice. That was spot on. Thanks. Um, <laughs> a few of you more. Oh, Kevin, you oh, Kevin, you should push me in Matsumura. Sorry, what's your name, bro? I wish there was a team up with an Instill, Ninja Storm, and Alien Rangers, but we got a fan film. Oh, yeah, so I don't know if you know, Glenn, but so Ninja, the Ninja Steel season, I think there was talks to have you guys back, but it didn't really pull through. So, I mean, did you guys hear about that? Like, you guys coming back for a anniversary special? No. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. There was a bit of talk about because of the Ninja theme. Yeah. Um, about some sort of mashup there. And that would have been cool because I think one of the girls in Ninja Steel, Christina, Christi Cristiani or something? Yes. She's Brazilian. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so like, and a few people have commented on that as well. They're like, oh, Ninja, Ninja, Yellow, Yellow, and you're both Brazilians. Obviously she's a girl and I'm not, but that's the only difference. As a kid, I wanted to do a sequel to Ninja Storm for Justin because they're red for next team. We'll know, you know, I know it's kind of hard. Eric McKnight, had actor playing the next real life. Oh. Hmm. Hey, 
Hey, I missed the, the end of that. What was that? Oh, oh, sorry. As a kid, I wanted to do a sequel to the Instagram where Dustin becomes the red for the next team. Little did I know his counterpart, Eric McKnight, from the finale would have his actor play the next role. Oh, All right. oh cool. Shout out Thunder. Let's see if I can find a few more. A few more. I love your yellow yellow line t-shirt I saw in the photos. I've been trying to find one everywhere in the net that's yellow. I can't wait to meet you in the future come one day. Um, yeah, look, I've, I, I got a few of those made up and I think like I literally only have one left, but um, I'll get some more made up. I had them at the um, Ranger Stock Convention. I think he's talking about like the yellow with this that one on. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, so Estela says, please say hi to Brazil if you can. Oi, todo mundo no Brasil. Eu ia colocar um, um link para todo mundo lá uh, ver essa entrevista, mas eu achei que fosse ser um pouco difícil por causa da língua. Mas talvez a gente um, organize uma, um outro dia para fazer um português. Oi, <laughs> todo mundo no Brasil. <laughs> <laughs> that's not so I'm from Austin. I've done my Portuguese. Uh, Boken says, do you still hang out with, the, with Katrina Devine? <laughs> uh, no, Katrina's living in Canada. So I haven't seen her in ages. I think she, yeah, she's in Canada. But, you know, we're friends on Facebook and uh, we're in touch every now and then. Oh, L'Oreal Harris says, Power Rangers has been going on for nearly 27 years. How does it feel being part of a legacy? Yeah, awesome question. Um, so yeah, we touched on that kind of at the start of the, the start of the, the live. Um, it's awesome. When I when I first got involved, obviously I knew Power Rangers because I watched it when I was a kid, but I didn't, you know, think that it would be going this uh, far in in my life. So it's awesome to be part of a, a legacy. I'm super proud of it. Laura is saying, "Oh, Tony is ill." If you were a Yellow Ranger from a different team, which one would it be? Ninja Steel. Because then I could be a ninja, still be Brazilian, and be a girl. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, but there was one other uh, Yellow male Power Ranger. What, what season was that from? Ninja Steel. Oh, no. Was that one? Which, one? which one? There was another male Yellow Ranger. Oh, mm. Mystic Lord. Which one, the, the first one? Yeah, so after me, there was one more male Yellow Ranger. Oh, that was uh, Yellow Mystic Force. Mystic. Yellow Mystic Force. Right. What's funny in the Sentai, he actually makes appearance in that Ninja Steel season. Well, in the Japanese footage, but I don't know why he didn't use it for that season. But uh, Bogan Kamado, I would love to see Glenn team up with Jim Gray, Nick Samson, Nick Graham to do a full squad male Yellow Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Nice. Uh, for sure. I'd be, I'd be up for that. Oh, oh, my cousin actually. Oh, so my cousin sent me a request. She actually her face not white, but she's asking for a final thing. Glenn, can you say your morph in your Dustin voice? End it off. <laughs> yeah, I can even do it like with the hand movements. Yes. So guys, to end this, we'll do a Dustin. We'll do a Dustin. Glenn will do a morph for you guys. Are you guys ready? Here we go. I haven't done this in some years, so I have to get like the cobweb off. <laughs> Ninja Storm, Ranger Form. Ha! One of those things that, like, I guess it's like riding a bicycle. Once you've done it a few thousand times, you just never forget it. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of so natural. Awesome. That was amazing. So, guys, so unfortunately, we, like, this ends our interview. Do your time. So, Glenn, where can I find you on social media? Uh, I'm on, uh, it's underscore Glenn McMillan underscore um, on uh, Insta and uh, my official Facebook page, Glenn. Um, but yeah, look, I, I get, I'm not that um, unfortunately active on social media. I'm on there sometimes, but if you guys want to send me a message, I, I do get them and um, and uh, appreciate everyone getting in touch when they do. Awesome. And Clement, where can I find you in social media? You guys can find me on Instagram. That's Celio1031. You can also find me on Facebook, The Morphin Network. I'm always hanging out around there, so you can find me easily. Nice. If I mean, so let me ask you guys: oh. are, are you are you guys both going to be at the um, at Ranger Stop if it's on later in the year and uh, Power Morphcon next year? Ranger Stop? No, we do too financial wise. Unfortunately, not this year. Oh, it's the other yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Morphicon, yes, because me and Clement, we live legit 12 minutes away from us. <laughs> nice. Like, cool. maybe well, 9 minutes blocks away. <laughs> well, I hope to see you guys there. Um, I'd be super excited to get over there for, for next year. Um, I've heard such good things about the uh, Power Morphicon, so I'll, uh, I'll be keen to hit it up for a first time ever. Definitely. Oh, all right. So here, here, guys. Glenn McMillan will be in Power Morphicon 2021. <laughs> nice. Awesome. So anyway, guys. Again, thank you guys so much for this special interview, for being part of it. Again, shout outs to uh, Colin K. Bass from Crimson Vision Studios for being a few short cameo here. And yep. before we end this interview, we want to give a shout out. What is it? Oh. A shout out to Ranger Stop Conventions. Uh, uh, Ranger Stop Convention. I froze. Okay, Ranger Stop Convention, uh, November 15, 2021. Sorry, I froze right there. But again, guys, thank you so much and happy good Friday night or Saturday or wherever you guys are. Again, guys, bye. Thanks again. See you guys. See everyone.